the race, the first race of the 2008 season here at Penn Bay, and off we go, sparing its away as we uh, saw the wreck of the year with a wonderful field of cars, and uh, they have been told by the clock, of course, to remember it is a 25 minute race, and it is a very sharp corner on this first half. It's a 25 minute race, the red lights go on, off they go, and uh, all of the front few rows move as one. Good start from number 14, Gary Byatt gets uh, a good run of momentum going, and in fact he has to tuck in behind Phil Moet, uh, looked like he was going to try and uh, sneak down the inside, Phil was just a little bit too wide for him, into the lead though, front row position, it's been Darnell Williams. Mark Turner, they're side by side as they go into the left hand row. And uh, they 
was driving side by side and they head into the centre essays for the first time. Steve Powers certainly got the difference with his team. So those two side by side through Honda this first time round. This is a 25 minute race. So I think Phil Maher, if anything, will just be looking to move through the field at this stage. Moving through the field also is Mark Hindley at the back of the field. He's made up about six positions as they head into Hatchett's Herkin for the second time. And it's all clean again. Good to see. So it's Pete Conner, Williams, Stephen Panas, Mark Turner, and then Matthew Hardy. And then we have a real tackle of cars behind. And it looks like it's just still Mark and Richard Norris. But they almost touch. Hollis had the door very firmly slammed on him through the Bainey. Certainly a good performance from Hindley there because, uh, as we said, these cars are very, very equal. And uh, behind them, we've got uh, Bryant's there, Wheeler, Fritchley, Jake Steely, and Brocklebank completing the top 10. Yes, well, it's 21 race, we've got 21 and a half minutes remaining. And given the slippery conditions, I think it's starting to be a little bit less fancy in the early stages when the driver's just going to come to the conditions. That said, as they head into the centre S's and Gavin Now Oliver, the last time I was back at uh, Martin Hindley, he was trying to make sure of one pair of And that is one pair of on the start finish line the pit crews are waving them on over the pit wall this is fantastic and we got three abreast then for the positions behind that is by hollis and wheeler so it's a bit of a shake up now and i think that mark great with the main prevail there because he breaks late on the outside then in fact it's great bart up the inside who is gary bart up the inside who is the position there so the order at the moment is keep kind williams just from steve house probably quite an anonymous race then got mark turner in third Phil Martin right behind him having a lot of fun playing with him. Then we have got Gary Bart just behind, followed by Greg Wheeler and then Adrian Hollis. And in 14th position at the moment is Martin Hindley. So he's up to four. He's currently squabbling over it, whilst Pete Cardell Williams is making hay whilst the sun doesn't shine here at Pembrey. The rest of them have gone four abreast to catch his head, even in the wet. Quite fantastic stuff. So Steve Harris is just being caught. And then Phil Mark is playing the sensible game. Harry Bart's having a lot of fun, and Greg Wheeler's coming with him, and the real reason for that is Mark Turner is shuffled back to the first place to make the So, uh, another place made up on that lap by our uh, man from the back, Martin Hindley, and uh, the next one he's going to be looking at... At Stephen Pamas, this time up into Hatchet, and I think he's going to make the move stick. Indeed he does, although Stephen Pallas certainly isn't back keen to give it to him and he tries to shut the door quite firmly. Indeed he does because he just had to turn the car on the dime to Gary Bart and that didn't really quite work for him. And that means that Greg Wheeler's having a sniff at Gary. Fantastic race of We've got one who's gone very, very wide through Honda and that is the 64 car and that is Jack Gabriel. The hatchets. And it's about four of them covered by a blanket, would be the best way to describe it. Gary Bart coming from so far back, he deep fogs his way up to second place. He was in fifth position on the way to the corner. He was up into second place halfway through the corner, and he's back into fifth position on the exit. So certainly some adventures there for Gary. And the way that that's all shuffled out is that is the Greg Wheeler in the 68 car. He's up into second place. That's fantastic for Greg from the levers from the grid. He's done really well, Greg Wheeler. Uh, in the first race, so uh, absolutely flying. Uh, dives to the inside. Phil Myers also dives to the inside. And is able to make the move? No, he's not. Gary Byrne closes the door. So we have Pat who just pushes Greg Wheeler a little bit wide. So at the moment, we have Phil Cardell Williams who's gone. Forget about him. In second place, we have the car of Gary Byrne. And then in third place, for this second, is Phil Cardell to be demoted possibly by Greg Wheeler. It's really anybody's race for the last two steps on the podium. It looks effortless, unlike the dots for second place, which just looks frantic, frankly. And it looks to me as if Gary Byrne's been able to get a little bit of a gap, and Greg Wheeler and Steve Pallas were dicing so hard that lap that the queue of cars behind, Phil Meyer, 
Mark Turner and Adrian Hollis just couldn't get anywhere near them. So as they come through, and it looks like Gary Barnes won a little bit wide, but that hasn't hurt him. And he's managed to get about six or seven car lengths on the others, squabbling for third place this time. So we are watching them come through. It may be an absolute sideways from Red Wiener, he just about holds it. Meanwhile, Adrian Hollis is up the inside of Phil Mike, and then coming on the inside of both of them is Mark Turner. So as they turn into this time round, who will be the hero of hatchets on this 13th lap? The answer is, I think none of them except Steve Pallas has a very optimistic look at the inside of Greg Wheeler there. There is no way that he's really going to make that move stick. So he drops back again, and that gives Phil Mars a little bit of an opening as they go through Spitfires. Then they swing across into Debaney. Again, they're just running in a trailer at the moment. They're clearly working together just to make sure they drop Adrian Wallace and Mark Turner for the time being.